much, Nibawa Hokahe, for singing for us this evening. Buju Ginawa, Jillian Rowan Nin Indigenous Kaz, Jaganashimu, Namadabin, Jaga. Gawi Napaji, Ninitanishinabem, Odawa Zaga Iganin and Donjaba, Aidash Gawin Mashi, Ingikani Masi, Nindudem. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jillian Rowan, and I am the lead coordinator of an auspice on campus called the Circle of Indigenous Nations, and I just wanted to give an initial welcome to you and introduce my colleague. Let him introduce himself. <laughs> there you go. Sounds it. Yeah, it's Ed. Share Donovan Begay in the share. Nanest Ezin, I don't in the slim. Cheshire Bushes Chin, Tolichini Dashiche. I just want to welcome you all. I am from the Zuni Corn People Red Meeting Water People Clan of the Navajo Nation, and I am the coordinator of American Indian Programs and Services in the Circle of Indigenous Nations. The Hokahe singers this evening are Randy Greshik, who is Boys Ford Ojibwe, Miziwe Dejarle, who is Red Lake Ojibwe, James Spotted Thunder and Daryl Spotted Thunder, who are Oglala Lakota, and Dana Nyman, Nyman, apologize, as Red Lake Ojibwe. Um, the Circle of Indigenous Nations, just to give you a very brief background, is we are a student support center on campus whose mission is to connect indigenous students to each other and to the scholarships and resources that we, that we will, that help students not just survive here at the University of Minnesota, but really thrive. And we also work closely with the American Indian Student Organizations as well as American Indian Studies Department. And we do that to help build um, future leaders on campus and off campus. This evening, we are recognizing and honoring the participants of the first year living learning community um, that the American Indian Cultural House that the Circle of Indigenous Nations coordinates. Um, before we eat, however, I have asked Chante Maza, Neil McKay, um, to lead our blessing for us. Um, Chante Maza is Spirit Lake Nation, um, apology, um, Dakota. Ojibwe <laughs> Ninsa. Um, and he has been an instructor here for an, of the Dakota language and American Indian history at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities campus for the last 12 years. He is, his specific teaching and research interests are in the preservation and restoration of the Dakota language and culture, and he graduated from the University of Minnesota in 1997 with a degree in American Indian Studies and is currently finishing a Master of Arts in Second Languages and Cultures. Chante Maza also consults and advises on indigenous lang language education and issues. I'm going to ask you to come forward. So I'm Chante uh, Maza. My English name is Neil McKay. I'm Bidawakantuan Dakota. Uh, Jillian's getting a spirit plate uh, there. Uh, interesting story. I was asked to smudge the the student dorms and. Um, I said that somebody pulled the alarm and the firemen showed up. <laughs> so uh, I didn't mean to do that, but you know. <laughs> so uh, just getting a plate there. So uh, just wanted to, to share something too for the students, you know. Um, so, uh, by my, my elders, by my teachers, uh, one thing that I have been taught, very basic teaching, whenever I uh, need something, uh, first thing I do is I talk to the Creator, I talk to a Trunkashida. And uh, everything will be right, everything will go the way it's supposed to. Uh, 
chanduhu ba wakanyu hawa chewaki akiha. So if we use the pipe, if we use tobacco, if we use the original tobacco, uh, so everything will be okay. So just going to say a uh, prayer and thanks for the food here. Going to ask for uh, good hearts, good minds. Um, also uh, that the students, families, people here at the U have a good year. And uh, also say a prayer for, um, for our elders too. This is the uh, 150th. Uh, 150 years later after the U.S. Dakota War of 1862. Uh, so we're thinking about that this year, how the events of the past and the events before 1862 uh, apply to today for not only uh, Dakota people, but also um, Euro-Minnesotans, Euro-Americans, uh, and other um, uh, indigenous people that live in the area. And also, uh, if you are fairly new here, um, this, this area is uh, originally Dakota land. And we, we say that it still is because we're spiritually connected to it. Our um, place of origin is not too far from here. It's down by the airport, the Minnesota River Valley. So that is our Eden. So um, just, uh, and when we go places, like uh, I went to New Zealand a few years back and I acknowledged the indigenous people there. When we, as indigenous people, when we go visiting other areas where other nations live, we should um, be able to acknowledge them. And uh, sometimes even if they're not there anymore. So, Itohe uh, Haide Piktido wanted to say thank you to the drummers too. Yupia Yadoampido, saying very nicely. So, Enakchido. Thank you. Um, now it uh, will be time to eat, but I just wanted to give you a little information about our wonderful caterer this evening, Salsa a la Salsa. Lorenzo Azria is the owner of Salsa a la Salsa with his wife, Elvia, and, uh, and is our wonderful caterer this evening. Lorenzo has over 30 years of cooking experience. He began his career as a dishwasher at a coffee shop in California in 1972. Today, Lorenzo is the, also the owner of Salsa a la Salsa and a la Salsa, two of the Twin Cities' most critically acclaimed Mexican restaurants. Lorenzo grew up in a Mexican village of Popo Park near the town of Ameca Meca, which is on the side of those legendary volcanoes Popocatipeti and Ixtasiwati, which are visible from Mexico City. After leaving the side of the volcano, he spent most of the 70s, 80s, and 90s in Los Angeles hotels and catering companies where he married Elvia and learned French cooking techniques, watched the California cu cuisine re revolution, and invented all sorts of dishes, dishes that combined authentic Southwestern tastes and techniques with the locale, high, high, with the locale high taste needs of Los Angeles high octane power players. Lorenzo says he has cooked for Julia Roberts and Jackie Collins, and just ask him about the things he's catered for Danny DeVito's Fourth of July festivities. <laughs> Thank you, Lorenzo, for and a la salsa catering for this wonderful meal this evening. So, let's eat. <laughs> Everybody's stomachs are nice and full with Lorenzo's wonderful cooking. Should we give him a round of applause? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Our keynote speaker this evening is Professor Jean O'Brien. She is the chair of the Department of American Indian Studies here at the University of Minnesota as an, and is an enrolled member of the Minnesota Chippewa Tribe, specifically the Mississippi Band from the White Earth Reservation. She received her Bachelor of Arts from Bemidji State University and her Master of Arts and PhD from the University of Chicago. Professor O'Brien was awarded the Native American and Indigenous Studies Association 2010 Best Subsequent Book Prize for her book, Firsting and Lasting, Writing Indians Out, of, out, Writing Indians out Existence in New England, and was the series advisor for the PBS series, We Shall Remain, which 
the American Indian Cultural House students featured in their spring film series in 2011. On a personal note, Professor O'Brien um, was here when I was a student at the University of Minnesota, and um, I was one of those students that was very undecided as a major. I think I switched my major about three times. Just about every time I went in to see my academic advisor, I switched it again. I think I went from music therapy to psychology and then finally took one of Jeannie O'Brien's classes. Actually, I believe it was um, American Indian History, 1850 to the present. And that was it. It changed me forever. Um, I loved what I was learning from this professor, her passion for it with, that she had within her lectures, um, and that she presented history from the indigenous perspective instead of from the oppressor. I mean, it centered and it solidified my academic focus. She inspired me to go on to, to, to major in American Indian Studies, and actually to even go on to graduate school. Uh, it is with extreme honor that I present Professor Jean O'Brien, my personal mentor, my professional inspiration, to you this evening. Oh, Jillian, as always, you're so sweet. Thank you so much for the nice introduction. It's so good to see all of you here tonight on this beautiful day. It would be a nice day to be outside, but you can do that after this. And hopefully you did this morning too and this afternoon. Um, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here and enjoy this wonderful food and company and music and everything, so um, thank you. Welcome to the American Indian Culture House Fall Feast 2012. The University of Minnesota and the Department of American Indian Studies wishes to extend a special welcome to all the parents, family, and friends of our first year students who are participating in this very special first year living, learning community. I also want to welcome all the past participants of the American Indian Culture House and the entire university community. There are also a number of high school students who received a special invitation from Jillian Rowan and the Office of Admissions to attend this evening to preview what kinds of events, activities, and opportunities are here at the University of Minnesota for American Indian students. A special welcome to all of you, and I hope you consider the University of Minnesota as a great college choice after high school. There are numerous professionals from the Office of Admissions here this evening to answer any questions you may have about applying to the University of Minnesota. Maybe they can raise their hands. So if you have questions, you can find these folks after we finish here. The American Indian Culture House Living Learning Community began in the fall of 2003 as a partnership between Housing and Residential Life Office, the Department of American Indian Studies, the Multicultural Center for Academic Excellence, Circle of Indigenous Nations, and the Office of Admissions. It was formed as a direct result from University of Minnesota students who requested a residential opportunity on campus that would connect Native students to each other with resounding support from Prof Professor Patricia Albers, who was the chair of the Department of American Indian Studies at that time, and from Susan Stubblefield, who's here, the Assistant Director of St Housing and Residential Life. The goal of the American Indian Culture House Living Learning Community is to provide a supportive community where the academic experience of students will be nurtured and enriched as well as help in making friends and to help students find their niche on campus, which can be so big and confusing. The house provides opportunities for students to explore their own identity, as well as provide opportunities to those students who want to reach beyond their own cultural background and learn about the experiences of others. The 2012-2013 American Indian Culture House, AICH, Living Learning Community has tremendous diversity with a co-ed class of 11 students we're happy to, to welcome today. Three are living in Comstock Hall, and the other eight are living in different residential halls or commuting from home, which is also an option. Students are from Kentucky, Minnesota, South Dakota, Texas, and Wisconsin, and they are enrolled in the Culture of Liberal Art, College of Liberal Arts and the College of Science and Engineering. They represent Ojibwe nations from Boys Fort and Lukuture, the Lakota Dakota nations of Lower Sioux Indian Community, and Sisseton Wapatan Sioux, and other tribal nations are represented, that are represented are the Ivoyal Tensa, I hope I said that right, um, the Blackfoot Eastern Band of Cherokee and Klamath. There are students who are, these are students who are very interested in learning about indigenous cultures, participating in the living learning community this year, including the community advisor for the ICH, 
A-I-C-H. Interests range from, aerospace, range from aerospace engineering, chemistry, classical civilizations, economics, theater arts, pre-major tracks for medicine and architecture, mathematics, and some who are still finding the major that best suits them, which is entirely appropriate. It sometimes takes a while, right, Jillian? <laughs> Some activities planned this year will include being involved with the U of M Native Garden on the St. Paul campus. Students will be involved in the garden year round with harvest in the fall, this fall, working in the greenhouse in the winter and planting in the spring. The students will also be hosting the fourth annual American Indian Culture House film series. Donovan's in charge of that, right? In the spring. The students um, this spring, and they will be learning important leadership skills like event planning and hosting events for the surrounding American Indian community. There are also at least two field experiences planned for the year, attending the, Amer the Minnesota American Indian Chamber of Commerce Awards Dinner and going to a sugar bush for at least a day to help with all the hard work and learn about the traditional maple sugar making process. Although, although the American Indian Culture House Living Learning Community focuses on enhancing the, first, the students' first year experience, the program goals also center in helping the students make connections that provide opportunities to be involved with the Native community on campus throughout their undergraduate years. Joining student organization, organizations like the American Indian Student Cultural Center and the American Indian Science and Engineering Society, for example, which are very active, both of them. Many previous American Indian Culture House students have taken this leadership path and will be recognized this evening. In addition to recognizing the first year students participating in the American Indian Culture House Living Learning Community this evening, we are honoring six students who graduated in the spring of 2012 and, and were in the American Indian Culture House for their first year at the University of Minnesota. They are Katie Carlson, We'll be doing more with this in a few moments, but just to give the names right now. Autumn Cavender Wilson. Malia Collins. Michael Elwood. Daniel Garrison. And Lorna Emmy Hermini Horses. In conclusion, I want to thank you all for taking the time to be with us this evening. To the high school students and their families who made the trip to campus to experience what, experience what opportunities there are here at the University of Minnesota for American Indian students and to all of you for being here to help us recognize the first year students participating in the American Indian Culture House and, in joining us, and to join us in honoring the American Indian Culture House graduates of 2012. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to be announcing this year's um, cohort for the 2012-2013 American Indian Culture House Living Learning Community participants. If I could just ask you to hold your applause until all students are at the front. Um, our first student is Storm Ashio, and he is from the Lakota Ray Band of Ojibwe. You can come up here. <laughs> we have Tyler Bowman from the Klamath Tribes. Hannah Bushyhead, Easter Ben of Cherokee. Vanessa Good Thunder, Lower Sioux Indian Community. Diana Hawkins from the Sisseton Wapiton Sioux Community. Nora Knudsen, she is a Lakota and Ojibwe. We also have a Steven Munson, very interesting student who wants to learn about intercultural learning and other cultures. We also have Cage Sebastian Pierre from the OVL Tansa. Barbara Steele, who is from the Blackfoot Nation. John Stout, who is of the Boys Sport Band of Ojibwe. 
and also Kendrick Voss, who is Ojibwe. So here are our American Indian Culture House students of the 2012-2013 cohort. And if you could just give us a round of applause for their amazing efforts. And you can now take your seats. Okay, now we are going to honor the students that graduated in the previous spring. The first student is Katie Carlson, if you could come up please. <laughs> Katie Carlson is from the Boys Fort Band of Ojibwe. She majored in American Indian Studies with the Ojibwe language track and minored in sociology with, of law, criminal, criminology, and deviance. And we have a blanket here for you. Pressure, but make a speech beforehand. Autumn Cavender Wilson is our next student. She's actually not here. She's already in a master's program um, down in El Paso, Texas. So we have Marissa Carr, who is here to accept her blanket for her. Marissa is actually a graduate of the University of Minnesota as well and was in the cultural house a few years ago, and graduated and received her blanket a few years ago. This is her blanket, Autumn's blanket. <laughs> Um, I talked to Autumn earlier this week and told her that I was going to be accepting the blanket on her behalf and that Jillian promised that she would record it and send a copy to her down in Texas. So I think I better say something. Um, I've known Autumn since she was a teenager, um, back when she lived in Arizona before she ever came to the U. Um, and I love her and she's like a little sister to me. She is one of the smartest people that I know um, and also one of the most honest and the most loyal and um, the kindest and the bravest and I think that she's wonderful and I'm so proud of her. She's somebody who always works very, very hard, especially um, on behalf of her community and when she decides to go for something that's important to her, there's no way to stop her, which is why she's in El Paso right now, um, learning to help ladies have babies, um, which is a level of courage that I can't imagine. So um, congratulations, Autumn. We wish you were here. Our next student actually is not here as well. <laughs> her name is Malia Collins. Um, she is Navajo. She received her Bachelor of Science in Psychology. And just a couple of quotes that she gave us. Her favorite, college, her favorite experience during college was the moment you finally understand a concept that you had spent all night reading over and over again. And of course, meeting all the wonderful people that helped me succeed. A special thanks to Jillian and, Ra and Raul. Um, and everybody else that have had an impact on my life, you will, be, you will all be remembered. And if you find yourself in the Arizona way, feel free to say hi. I would love to return the hospitality that was given to me. 
And then she says, what I'm doing now, right now I'm in the process of assisting the development of a behavioral health clinic in Page, Arizona. If you need more information, let me know. I hope all is well with you. Um, and that is Malia's, and here's her blanket. And accepting this blanket is Raul Aguilar, Jr. <laughs> Okay, so I asked Malia a couple days ago if I would accept her blanket for her. Um, I told her, I said, Jillian might make me make a speech, so <laughs> I said, I don't know what to say, but um, just that um, we met, our first day meeting, uh, we met over at, the, I think it was at the AISC, the Culture Center for, and we didn't know each other, so we just said hi or whatever, and it was like, oh, you want to go to the mall? And <laughs> like, yeah, sure. So um, we spent nine hours our first day at the mall meeting each other. <laughs> and then the, <laughs> then the next day we went out and we, I, I was supposed to get shoes and I didn't. So <laughs> I, went back, I went back the next day and I got um, for another six more hours. <laughs> we, just, we just did whatever and just chit chatted and got to know each other. And ever since then we've been really great friends and I still talk to her today and I absolutely love her. So. Um, I know that she'd be glad that I accepted her blanket for her. Thank you. Our next student is um, Michael Elwood, who also is not here. <laughs> he majored in um, computer engineering, and I think that he, uh, what I heard from a friend of his is that he is pretty busy. Um, and. Uh, hasn't had a chance to take a break yet, which is why he's un unable to be here this evening. But we do want to show you what his blanket it looks like that he will be receiving. Donovan's and Donovan's going to accept that blanket <laughs> on his behalf. <laughs> Let's see. Daniel Garrison, another of our students. He actually is down in Austin, Texas now. Um, but uh, he, so he's unable to be here as well. Um, he um, majored in political science while he was a student here and received that degree. He um, says, well, it says right up here, if you can read it, his favorite experience during college was finding myself throughout my college career was the most important thing I could have ever done in my life. I'm in a great place right now. I learned to surround myself with positive people while keeping the negative out of my life. It does wonders. I'm not the same person I was five years ago or even last year. It may sound cliche, but I found myself at the U of M. And what he's doing now, as of August 1st, I'm in August, Austin, Texas, fulfilling a year of AmeriCorps, teaching in the 4-H Capital After School Program. I'm also trying to get involved with the Big Brothers Big Sisters Program while I live down here. And after my final AmeriCorps year is finished, I plan to begin graduate school or work with a nonprofit down in Austin. Moving down to Austin was one of the best decisions of my life. Congratulations, Daniel. And our final student that we'll be honoring tonight, who is here? <laughs> is uh, Ray, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Rayette Peltier is going to be accepting Daniel's. Thank you. <laughs> this is his blanket. <laughs> Jumped ahead of myself. <laughs> you want to say anything? Sure. Um, right into the mic. <coughs> uh, Daniel and I are still pretty good friends. We met. Um, he actually, it's a funny story because there's this bridge program that I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Um, they, I, do they still have the bridge program? No? Okay, there used to be this bridge program that was really cool for um, people who just graduated from high school to get a little feel of what it was like to go to college before they actually went to college. And well, I was supposed to be a part of the group and I decided, you know, well, I don't, I don't want to do that yet so I'm just going to I don't, I'm just gonna enjoy my summer and not like worry about any like classes or anything because I took a class. 
<clears throat> well, I somehow got stuck with those people at orientation, and I, everyone knew each other, and I didn't know anybody. And I was like, wow, this is fun. And then, like, out of nowhere, Daniel's like, hey, you know, he just said hi to me, and, and then the friendship started from there. So it was really awesome because I didn't know anybody, and he just came up and was like, hey, you know, you, what's up? Like, I see that nobody knows you, and you're uh, like, yeah. So that was really cool of him. Um, I just talked to him earlier, and he said he'd like to share a few words. Um, he wishes he was here today to enjoy the feast with everybody and that he'd also like to thank the American Indian Culture House and COIN, especially Jillian. Um, currently, as she said, he's in Austin, Texas, um, teaching after school uh, programs for kindergartners, uh, third graders, fourth and fifth graders. And he loves it, and he just says thanks. And now, um, the other student that is here, and thank you, Rayette, for accepting that for Daniel, um, is Lorna Emmy Her Many Horses. Lorna is Sikanju and Oglala Lakota. She majored in special education here. Her favorite experiences during college were, was her involvement in student organizations and committees. Um, the American Indian Student Cultural Center, the American Indian Science and Engineering Society, the Second Floor Advisory Committee, and uh, meeting new people from different places and allowing that to influence my life. What she's doing now is she's actually back in school earning her Master's of Education degree at the University of Minnesota here. She says, my degree is in special education, specializing in developmental and cognitive disabilities. I'm also earning an Autism Spectrum Disorder Certificate. Upon completing my program, I plan to teach on a reservation in South Dakota. Eventually, I would like to earn a PhD in education, focusing on educational issues affecting Indian country. And this is her blanket. everyone in in the email we were asked to impart wisdom on the on the freshmen um, I don't really know what wisdom I have to offer but <laughs> I think that like I said one of the most important things for me was being involved on campus and I think that for the students who just started here and the students who are thinking about going here um, that that was a really important thing for a lot of the students, um, for those of us who have graduated, that was one of the things that kept everyone in school. So I would encourage you to try and get involved um, with the different American Indian organizations, get involved at COIN, get involved at the AICC. And yeah, so I think that that's where I learned the most on campus, not just in my classes, but also from a lot of my peers in those organizations. So thank you. Hey is going to sing an honor song now, and if anybody would like to come up and shake the graduates' hands at that time, please feel free.
sit down now. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, just hang on for, for now. We'll give, them to you. we'll give you the boxes after. So just uh, in kind of conclusion, um, just a note about the vegetables that are on the tables and actually the little plants that are on the tables as well. Those are all giveaway items for you to all take home. We have a garden um, that Professor O'Brien mentioned in her um, in her keynote address that is in the, on the St. Paul campus called the Native American Medicine Gardens. And all the produce that you see and all the flowers that are on the tables are from the, the, from the Native American Medicine Gardens in St. Paul. So please feel free to take a tomato or some green beans or a squash, whatever you feel like. Um, if you're taking the flowers, please leave the vases, but you're welcome to take the flowers. Um, and then also, uh, just a special little note about the little plants that you see there. That's actually, those are offshoots from a plant that we have in our Circle of Indigenous Nations office. And so that's kind of another thank you for coming tonight. And it has a little, um, a little information about what great things plants can do uh, in your workspace, home space, um, any space. So, and with that, I think that we will have um, Hoka Hay do a traveling song for us. And then, um, if one last thing, <laughs> uh, if anybody needs parking validation, please come and see me. I do have part or see Brittany in the back there who is waving her hand. She's got coupons that will validate your parking for you. Um, and also, if the students that are, that are the, grad, the graduates and the current students, if you can please stay so that we can take one final group shot of everyone, that would be great. Okay, and thank you all for coming, and especially for those students who, or high school students who came from, from pretty far away. Thank you very much.